Hey everybody, Evan here with another Moodle moment. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take a look at the Ali community and some of the features within it. If you're not familiar with the Ali community, it's something you want to be. It's a part of our Agora. It's also a part of our K12 Moodle server. Um, in fact, if I go to the K12 Moodle server, you'll see the community down in the teacher resource area right here, uh, listed there. Um, and it's a great place for not only online instructors, but also teachers in K-12 classes that want to do a little blended learning in there. We've got lots of resources available um, to help out teachers. And if you check out our website at www.aapdonline.org, we've also got a kickoff event for the month of February that uh, you're not too late to join. It's called 28 Days of Ali, and, and it's got um, uh, lots of professional development opportunities and resources available. One of the things that some participants within the class have said is that uh, they're, they're really interested in how this was built because they've realized that this is actually something that's built within Moodle and it looks a lot different than the Moodle class that they had built. Uh, how do you do that? Um, that's one of the, the hidden secrets with Moodle is that sometimes it gets a bad rap for how it looks, but it actually allows you to do a lot of different things. Uh, the first thing you notice is that the theme, the overall layout, is different than most of the themes with, uh, on our systems. Uh, this actually uses a different theme uh, called Essential. Um, I've taken the theme, I added in the logo and the colors and everything, but the look and feel, this bar right here, um, the, uh, uh, the, the place where you get the blocks over on the side, um, how the, um, the places looks up here with the social uh, networks, which are links to the AAPI, Pinterest account, YouTube, Twitter, and such. All of that is different than the typical layout, which you can see here on our homepage where the nav bar is up at the top and such. This is a different theme. This is called Halbu, and as I mentioned, this one is called Essential. Uh, some people ask, well, wh why did you do that? One thing is that this particular theme does have a lot of these social networking plugins, which works great for a community. And it also helps to have uh, it look different than uh, our courses do to help uh, kind of set that aside. Within Moodle, uh, the, the national uh, community of Moodle users, more and more Moodle schools are looking at a theme like Essential. Uh, it's, one of the, uh, it's one of the more popular themes coming out in recent years. And so we here at AAP Online are also looking into that. So it might be a theme that you see um, going forward used quite a bit. Another item that's asked is, what, what about this banner right here and, and how you're using this? Um, the, the banner itself is uh, not within Moodle. It's actually within a free program um, or a paid program. We're using the free version called Wow Slider. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, there are probably other ones out there too that might even be better. Uh, we just picked this one uh, because it gets the job done. Um, the program, the, the banner program, allows you to upload pictures and then set them to links. What I had to do is I had to create a page. So, for example, Ali on Digo. I created this Digo page first so that I had the link for it. And then once I had the link, I could create the banner with that picture in it and the link to it. So, um, so that's, uh, and then once I had that banner done, I went and I zipped it and I uploaded it uh, to, the, to our uh, Moodle class right here. Uh, another thing people will notice is that when you get down here, it doesn't look like Moodle. In fact, these links are all um, very different looking, and a lot of people ask, how do you do things like that? Uh, and, and the answer is, well, Moodle allows you to go and hide things. So if I were to turn my editing on, the new theme, the button to do that is right here, you're actually going to see that the Moodle stuff is still there. It's down here. And it's sort of hidden, but not really. We think of hiding as making it so that students can't see it and teachers can work on it. All of these items, students could see, but they just can't see the link to them. It's called orphaning. And within Moodle, you can do this in a special way. Now, this all looks Moodle-esque. And again, you can only see this part because I'm in as an instructor and I've turned my editing on. Uh, students would not be able to see this. So all of these are resources that we have linked to up here. And uh, so you might say, well, how do you get orphaning? The strategy is this. I went and I actually built these 10 sections first. And in some cases, I built all the things in them. In some cases, I just put at least one resource in them. Once I get that done, if I go and I edit my course settings, which you are familiar with, 
and I go down to my course format area, I change the number of topics, number of sections, from 10 to 0. Okay? And then what that does is it doesn't delete the stuff that gets hidden when it goes to zero. It just orphans them. So they're still there. The links still work, and you can still see them when you're editing, but they don't show up. And so that's a backdoor way of making your course look unmoodle-like. Um, the, the, um, that, that allows us to go in and create things. So we have a full section on soft chalk, for example. We've got... Um, a section on all these different parts, the resource part, the collaborate part, the PD opportunity part. And then we also have a Molly course within our class, and that actually has six units within itself. If we add in additional things, like an additional class with units um, within there, we'll just add in um, more categories. I have to go into the edit settings and move it up to like 15, put at least one thing in each of those, and then move it back from 15 to zero. Okay. Then, once I've done that, this is just a simple design. Um, I can come in to my label, and I actually made a table. And if you're a, a web designer, you'll know there's a lot um, better ways to design things than tables, but tables works for me. I've created um, little buttons, if you will, uh, little images, and I just made a link to them. And then that link goes to the particular page of that resource, which is now orphaned. Okay. And so that works perfectly for what we want to do. So that's a, that's a strategy. It's probably not something that um, beginning or even advanced um, uh, Moodle users are going to use. This would probably be something very special that you wanted for your class and you wanted to, uh, uh, to change the look and feel for it. Um, but if you are interested in doing something like that, please let me know and I can help out. All right, going back to our community, I'm going to turn the editing off. Um, we have over here um, some different blocks that you probably haven't seen before. There's certainly people don't know what a 28 days of Ali block is or such. And they turn on their, just turn my editing off. I'll turn it back on. If I go and I add in a block, these are some basic blocks. You say, well, how did you add those in? Well, those are all HTML blocks. And HTML block sounds kind of challenging, but it really isn't. So I just added a new one. And here it is. And if I go in and I click to configure that block, what an HTML block is, is, is all, it's just a label within Moodle. And you can add in any text, any pictures, and make them in the, uh, into links if you'd like. And that way you can design whatever you would like. So it works great for simple labels, like uh, if I go back here, we wanted um, a, a label for the 28 Days of Ollie. And I want to put in some links, so we put that in there. But then we also have a feed from our Digo community of uh, different uh, bookmarks that we've made. And you can go grab the feed from that over at Digo. It's just a code, so I placed it in just like I would um, a YouTube playlist or other uh, HTML type things. So these HTML blocks work really well and it allows you to design it how you would like. Um, that's the, the last thing I want to leave you with is that you know we've taken within this course, within this community, and we've integrated a lot of things that aren't Moodle, and we've done so hopefully in a seamless way. So we mentioned the WOW slider. Uh, we use uh, Zoom for webinars, and then we go in and we post the webinars in a Google Calendar, which is embedded. And then we have our webinars placed in a, um, in a YouTube playlist, which people can access. If they want to attend the webinar, they click there to go to the Zoom session. None of those tools there need an account to, to access. It's all kind of integrated in. We do have a couple, like Digo, for example. We do um, uh, encourage our community members to create a Digo account so that they can then go and bookmark um, items over here as well as participate within our annotations where we annotate different articles and such within our community. Um, so we have some community members going and annotating there. So in that case, participants would need to, to create a Digo account, but none of, the, none of the, uh, the use of that tool actually takes them outside of the community. It's all integrated within. And that's a strategy that we've learned helps make the class more cohesive and yet more dynamic so that you, uh, you can totally utilize some of the great Web 2.0 tools that are out there. All right, so that's a look at some of the new, neat features we've got. 
within the Ali community. Uh, we're going to look at some additional features with our next Moodle moment, um, specifically around forums, because within the Moodle community we've got a few different forum types than you're used to. And so I'll be looking for that for our next, uh, next Moodle moment in a couple weeks. Happy Moodling, everybody.